So, let, let me tell you, let me tell you a secret. There's a time and a place for everything. For example, this mustache. It had its time. It was like the 70s or 80s or whatever, whenever it was popular. But 2020, not not so popular. PC building. Now there's a. It seems like it's always a good time to build a PC, but many would say right now it's not the best time. And that might be true. But just like this mustache, I say let's build a PC. So that's what we're gonna do today. So thanks to Antec for sponsoring this video, making it possible. They sent over their DP501 case and a power supply. And I picked out a lot of the parts that I would build or use right now. If I was gonna build a PC right now for what I do, which is gaming and obviously doing this mustache video stuff, what would I build mid-range to do both of those things? And I think I like what I got set up. So of course, if you're gonna do anything other than gaming, now old me would have said FPS only, but now that I do the, do the computer video stuff, the 3700X is literally one of the best values out there for gaming and productivity, and I think you can't beat it as of now. I mean, that could all change when the 4000 series comes out, but that day isn't here yet. For GPUs, normally I'm an Intel, or not Intel, I'm a NVIDIA person. I always go for max FPS, but then I got to thinking if I was doing a, a build, $1,400 range, I wanted, I, know I use 1440p monitors I have, Three of them here. I've always used 1440p. I just like it over the 1080. And the 5700 XT is going to give you more bang for 1440p than the 2060 Super. And it's it trades blows with the 2070 Super while being a lot less money. So 5700 XT all the way, which makes this an all AMD build. And then it comes out of the motherboard. So normally I would say, well, actually at, when I when I bought this, um, I was like, well. I want to have the ability to go fourth gen Ryzen if it really does blow the doors off everything. And to do that, I needed a 50 or X570 because all the should be bobs about uh, B450 is not supported, X470 is not supported. So I was like, you know what, let's play it safe, X570. But now it comes out that B450 looks like it's going to support 4000 series. So you could probably save a little more money by going to 450 board or uh, 550 when it comes out. But for now, X570 from ASRock, Steel Legend. I've had ASRock boards. The 2500K ran on ASRock Extreme 4, and that board did well for many, many years. RAM, I got some white T-Force Nighthawk, RGB, of course. RGB is like the mustache of computers. It's always popular, though. And so this is what blew me away. I remember when I was, it wasn't that long ago, when I was looking for storage. And if you want an SSD, you're, you're chopping off arms and, and send them in. But now you can get an NVMe one terabyte M.2 drive. And I think I pay like 130 for that. And that's, that's a pretty good price. Not PCI 4. I have a PCI 4 M.2 in that one. No, I'm gonna be honest, I don't, really, I don't really notice that big of a difference, but that might be just me, but that is a good deal. Uh, you could save a little more money here still by going with the, just a normal SSD 2.5 inch and uh, 500 gigs. But uh, games now, man, huge, huge. But if if you like, if you just take the game off that you're not using, just keep installing the ones you're going with. You can get by with lower ones, and you'll notice that I did not get a cooler. And this is also a reason I think we we had Intel as the as the, as the go-to CPU or for so long that we forgot that CPUs used to come with coolers. I guess Intel's lower end stuff does, but who doesn't want to try some overclocking? And I mean, obviously. The Prism cooler is not the best, but I think it should be noted that if you get a Ryzen CPU other than the 3950X, you're going to get a cooler, and I think that we're going to take advantage of that, save the extra 50, 100 bucks it would be to buy a good cooler. Not going to be able to do a lot of overclocking, but we have one, and we don't need to buy one now, and it saves money to uh, put into a better GPU. And I think it's worth it. I think you, you save the $100 on an AIO or a high-end air cooler, and you put that money towards well, you were going to get a 2060 Super, and now you can get a 5700 XT or maybe just a 2070 Super if you save a little bit more than that because it's a little bit more expensive. But the 5700 XT is good. I can't wait to see what new graphics cards AMD releases. That's what we're going to go. Obviously, you see the build theme is white and black. Uh, I did paint the cooler. Uh, you just got to take your time. Just tape everything off. The better tape job you do, the better job or the better paint quality or paint finish comes out 
And this is always one that gets me, be patient. When you paint it, wait. Don't touch it, be like, oh, it looks dry, because that's what I always do. I'm like, I just need to do stuff with it, so I gotta touch it, and then next thing I know, I got a fingerprint on it, and you never get that really go away. So if you're gonna paint something, take your time and tape it out. <laughs> is that a t-shirt? And then make sure to wait until it's dry. Give it 24 hours, 48 if you can. Just paint it and let it sit. Just go forget about it. I was gonna paint the cooler on this uh, Red Devil, but then I took it out and I was like, ah, I can't paint that. It's, it's too nice. It, it really is a nice looking cooler. Plus, um, I did paint the fans on my old 1080, which is still working, that one I baked. And when it did die, because I killed it, EBJ was going to RMA it for me, but they're like, you need to have the stock fans, and I painted them, so they kind of put you in a tough spot if you can't find replacements. So like the stock cooler for the 3700X, nobody's gonna care if you paint that because chances are you're probably just gonna replace it down the road anyway. But if you paint your GPU and you break it, you're kind of stuck. So don't paint things if you uh, don't wanna accept the risk of not being able to return them. But I think that is a pretty good build situation. I'm going to learn my lesson this time. If I learned anything from doing the 3950X build, that's the power of the mustache for you. I learned that uh, let's turn things on outside the computer so when we build it up, we don't um, hate our lives by having to take it back apart. I'm also going to add some fans. Where they go? There they are. So I, I just didn't, I didn't really count these as part of the build because I actually just had these downstairs, forgot about them. These are some Antec ARGB fans and I'm going to take the one that comes in the case. So this case does come with four fans, which is pretty impressive. So you don't really need to buy any extra fans if you're gonna do this exact build, but since I had these downstairs, I'm gonna take out the one in the back that's just white, replace this one and the two on top, and we'll have some RGB. I'll leave the front three that come in there because why not, they look good. And you don't really see them too much anyway, but that, oh, I'm gonna add some cable, custom cable sleeving. So those two things, they're just aesthetic purposes. They, they make things look better, but if you're going to build this on a budget, save those till, till later. Take your money and put it towards a GPU and a CPU. Enough said. Let's get to building.
Ah, it's alive. So as you can tell by the lack of mustache, it's been a week, no, two, two weeks since I started this build and I'm finally up and running properly. And wow, I don't know if it's me. Well, on my 3950X build, that definitely was me. But this time, uh, every time I touch an AMD build, I have problems. So I guess we should just cover my issue real quick. If you didn't watch my last video, after I got everything all hooked up, plugged in, I was getting ready to do some benchmarking, I logged in and noticed that at the top of my screen, there was a strange little flicker. And I was like, that's weird. Uh, made sure my driver's up to date, everything looked good. So uh, I was a bit confused. So I grabbed my 1080 over there, the one that I shake and baked in the oven, still working, put it in the system and noticed that the problem went away. So I assumed it was a bad graphics card. It's just about my luck, but I got on my Amazon account, requested a replacement. The next week, one showed up. Woo, excited, plopped her in there, and burp, same issue. So uh, at that point, I was like, well, there's no chance I got two graphics cards that are both broken in the same exact way. So this must be some sort of driver situation. We all know AMD's track record in the driver department, not good. So I start troubleshooting, took the card out, put it in my 7700K build, uh, test bench over there, same issue. And then I just happened to take the card and put it in my 3950X build. And when I put it in that PC, I didn't have the problem. But the difference was, is that PC is using an ASUS 1440p 165 hertz monitor over display port. Whereas this one, and when I had it on my 7700K, was using the BenQ monitor that I got here and a display port. So seeing that I didn't have the issue there and I had an issue here, I just went and found an HDMI cord. There's an HDMI port on this card, plugged it in there just to see. And lo and behold, it works. So some, for some reason, this BenQ monitor and this Red Devil 5700 XT do not like to talk to each other over DisplayPort. It's probably some sort of free sync issue that you guys pointed out, but I don't know. This monitor has none of that. It's just a 1440p 60 hertz monitor, budget gaming monitor. No free sync, no G-Sync, none of that stuff. But I don't know. For someone that's come from only doing Intel and NVIDIA builds in the past, I will say, hate them or love them, Intel and NVIDIA, they just work. You plug them in and you turn it on and the drivers work, things talk to each other and you don't have issues. In my two times experience in AMD and from what I've read online, AMD's drivers kind of suck. And I have reaped the, the sadness of trying to figure out why they suck. I guess on that one, that's my fault because I did the power supply thing. But other than that, I had the chipset problem on that guy. This is still only going over to HDMI, which is fine on this monitor. But anyway, it's working now. Things are looking good. Instead of talking about how I suck at building computers, let's talk about the one I finally did build and got to work. First up, the case, the DP501 from Antec. Antec makes some pretty good cases. I'm still using the P120 Crystal, love it. And for the, this price point of this case, you get a lot of great features. You get a nice tempered glass side panel, nice white aesthetic, and you get four fans, which is awesome, especially if you're looking to do a budget build. You want to save a little money here and there, not have to pick up a bunch of fans, which I always, when it comes to aesthetics, you should always aim for the best performing graphics cards or CPU before you worry about fancy RGB fans or anything like that. So. The fact that a case comes with four fans out of the box, don't need to buy anything else, is awesome. Plus you get the RGB controller in the back of the case, which is why I also added RGB around the side. Now I wasn't going to, I was like, eh, maybe it's a little too much, but you have this nice little built-in RGB strip here and I had some Corsair RGB strips just kind of hanging out. So I was like, why not? Now I don't have the Commander Pro or whatever that little thing is that controls the Corsair cable, but you don't need it. I mean, pretty much any three pin RGB cable runs the same RGB diodes. So as long as you know which one's five volts, ground and data, as long as you got leads that you can pull out, you can plug it into any three volt header, as long as it's five volt and you got, you know, where your data and ground is. And that's what I did. I just grabbed some jumper cables from my Adreno kit, plugged it into my Corsair cable and plugged it right into the Antec board and voila, everything's working just fine. I mean, other than the driver situation, I didn't really have any issues. The only other minor inconvenience I had was I'm using this T-Force RGB RAM, some nice looking white sticks, but they have these real big giant heat spreaders on them. 
and the uh, Red Devil 5700 XT is a pretty thick boy graphics card, so when you put those two in there together, they get a little, little rubby. So you can probably see from back there there's a slight dip to this card because those heat spreaders are so big. Everything seats in there nicely. It's not like it's torquing on it or anything like that, so it won't be any issue for me long term, but if you're getting ready to use a big, beefy graphics card like this and some T-Force flared-out RAM, just know that you might have some interference issues. I really like how the Prism cooler turned out. That little bit of white helps tie the custom sleeve cables together, also the RAM together. If I didn't, if that was black, there'd be a lot of black going on, and those RAM sticks would kind of just stick out, but having that... Nice big white cooler kind of helps tie the whole build together. And honestly, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Although it about made me lose the rest of my hair. It, it cost me my mustache with all the stress. But other than that, let's talk about performance. So this system is a 3700X, 5700XT, and I'm comparing it to my 3950X 2080Ti system because currently, uh, since Big Navi 3000 RTX and... 4000 series Ryzen is not out? Wow, said all those like questions. Basically because all the new stuff isn't out yet, that's still top of the line. So I wanna see how a mid-range system that's $1,400 compares to a system like that one, which is not counting all the water cooling, around 3,500 bucks if you're gonna build that. So if you're like me, you wanna know what a system like this is gonna get you performance-wise compared to what is considered top of the line. So that is what we're gonna take a look at and I ran Productivity, so I did a 10 minute video render. Um, Cinebench R20, both of these systems were set in cr or creator mode in Ryzen Master, and then I switched over to gaming mode on both these systems and just let the precision boost overdrive do its thing. And I ran Overwatch, because it's a game I play lots of times, and I also play Modern Warfare, so there's two games I play, so ran both those systems, same settings, and the performance might shock you. So that just goes to show you how much $1,400 can get you nowadays. I mean, kind of makes you look at a system that's that expensive and be like, what are you doing? But I guess if you want top of the line, most frames per second, that's really the best you can get currently. But the way things are going, you're going to be able to get a mid-range card that outperforms that 2080 Ti eventually, and that's going to be awesome. So... If you want any of the items that I've shown in this build here, check the link down below. And thank you again to Antec for letting me build this. And uh, here's to hoping that AMD makes their drivers less drunk. Till next time.